OK, so these type five LSAs, as I was just saying, are going to be advertised throughout the entire area. So these static routes, this ISIS, this EBGP, if it's an EBGP peering router, whatever it may be, are advertised. All those routes that are contained within this router here are actually routed inside this area. They will be injected into area one via this AS ASBR as type fives. And what is a type five LSA? That is an autonomous system LSBR external router, okay, or external LSA. Uh, so these type fives are advertised all throughout the same area. Now that's really important because again, it keeps the LSDB absolutely. And the type five LSA does some fancy work really with the type one. And coming back, this is the router LSA. This is the router identifying who it is, what is its router ID, who's connected to it, and what is the initial cost to get to that network prefix. But by using, and this is a little bit more advanced, but using the VEM, VEB, sorry, uh, using the VEB bits, not necessarily all of them, it can actually flip one of these bits at least to actually indicate it's an ASBR. The V bit is for the virtual links. So if we come back to here where we've got discontiguous network area four connected to area zero through area three, this uh, the uh, ABR here would actually flip the V bit. Where if we have a ASBR that has external networks connected to it, it will flip the bit here. So it will actually then advertise and let other routers know via the type one that hey my e-bit is flipped and i have external networks can outside of ospf connected to me i am an asbr but it's actually the type 5 lsa that advertises what those network prefixes are okay so there's the difference type 5s are advertising what those network prefixes are that external to ospf type 1 is again just advertising what that router is uh, who's connected to it and the cost now when these type 5 lsas these external LSAs basically get to the ABR here, it's not going to change them. It's not going to summarize them into a summary LSA, i.e. a type three. It's actually going to keep them, and I'm going to draw them in different here. It's actually going to uh, advertise them still as a type five LSA. So that type five LSA that's come all the way through here, is still a type five LSA as it is transiting the backbone itself. And it comes through to this ABR here and depending on the type of network, not so stubby or totally stubby, so on and so forth, that type five would be then advertised into area two. But here's the problem, here's the challenge. How does the router here and even here know where am I going to go to to get to here, because don't forget that if it's area three, yeah, area four, five, six, it needs to know who this ASBR is and how do I actually get there? So what the ABR actually does as well is it will also inject LSA type fours, which basically identify who the ASBR actually is in the first place. OK, so that's the basics of the OSPF routing protocol, but there's two things I want you to take away, really. And we're going to go into more detail on all this. OSPF, open shortest path first, OK? OSPF routers that are advertising, receiving, keeping the LSDB up to date, so on and so forth, they will calculate what is the shortest path to get to that network prefix itself. Now, in a network like this, it is straightforward. But with external networks, they it becomes further, further, further complicated when we start talking about the costs such, such as the difference between E2, E1, N2, N1, and difference between intra areas and inter areas, so on and so forth. But always OSPF routers will calculate the shortest path to that destination and take that route. Additionally, the, it is a scalable routing protocol because we have these different areas and ABRs which are summarizing the type one and type two LSAs and advertising it into different areas via the backbone and vice versa. We're keeping it scalable. We're able to add new areas 
as the network uh, progresses over time and uh, increases in size. And it keeps the scalability in the, in the essence that actually not all those routers have to keep this massive routing table, this massive link state database. And the reality is that some of those devices, especially on the lower end of specifications performance, simply cannot do that. 